But what happens when there are no sources of disease resistance in the gene pools of wild relatives? Where do plant breeders turn when there are no wild relatives? What happens when a plant breeder has to go fishing outside of the gene pool? To explore this, let's take a look at a delicious and nutritious fruit crop that is grown across the tropics, the papaya. Papaya is grown on a commercial scale as well as by small-scale growers for home or local consumption. It's close to an ideal crop for small-scale growers because it can be easily grown from seed and it requires few inputs. The mature fruits can usually be harvested within the first year after sowing and the fruit is produced year-round. Like all plants, however, papaya is threatened by plant diseases. Globally, the papaya's worst enemy is the papaya ring spot virus, found in every part of the world where papaya is grown. The disease causes a yellowing and distortion of the leaves, which prevents the plants from being able to adequately capture the sun's light to convert into energy. The plants are ultimately stunted, the flowers are aborted, few fruits are produced, and those that do set are decorated with an undesirable ring spot pattern from which the disease takes its name, the papaya ring spot virus. Fruits have reduced sugar content, off flavors, and are unmarketable. Trees infected with the ring spot virus soon die. The virus is spread by an aphid vector, the green peach aphid. Aphids vector many plant viruses. In fact, it's their most devastating effect on agriculture. The green peach aphid carries the ring spot virus on their stylets. Each time an aphid probes a papaya fruit, it transmits the virus particles to new fruits. Just imagine how rapidly an aphid passing through a papaya orchard can spread the virus by quickly depositing virus particles on each fruit that it probes. Chemical control is usually not effective against plant viruses, nor is it desirable for environmental reasons. A smarter solution would be to use genetics, not chemicals, to control this devastating disease. However, this poses challenges. Unlike wheat, papaya doesn't have any wild relatives. Carica papaya is a single species in the genus Carica. The closest relative to Carica papaya belongs to the genus Vasconcelea, which resides so far from papaya on the tree of life that the two cannot be interbred. Plant breeders trying to protect papaya from the devastating effects of the ring spot virus have not been able to find any naturally occurring sources of resistance to the papaya ring spot virus. So, scientists working to control this disease had to turn to new tools, like genetic engineering. In the mid-1980s, scientists were discovering a phenomenon called pathogen-derived resistance. This concept is based on the idea that plants can acquire resistance to a pathogen when introduced to a component of that pathogen. Not too unlike how we, through vaccination, develop resistance to diseases by being exposed to them. Soon after, a more specific form of pathogen-derived resistance was described, coat protein-derived resistance. To understand this, we first need to get a better picture of the components of a virus. Simple viruses are made up of a nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA, and an outer shell made up of a protein coat. In the 1980s, plant virologists found that if you could expose plants to the components of a virus, such as the coat protein, you could incite tolerance to that virus in the plant. When the tools of genetic engineering came along, scientists further realized that if you could transfer the gene, or even a portion of that gene, that codes for the virus coat protein into the genome of the plant, the plant would use its inherent viral surveillance system to shut down production of the virus in the plant body. The discovery of pathogen-derived resistance and the tools of genetic engineering offered new approaches to control plant viruses that no longer relied on the existence of genes from wild relatives and are not limited by the constraints of conventional plant breeding. It was a new era. So, how did scientists respond when there was no genetic material to work with? Quite simply, they employed the emerging concept of using a genetic component of the virus itself to protect or vaccinate papaya. 
And with the tools of genetic engineering, this was made possible and relatively efficient.